tonight we're going to be talking about sugar. Um, it is the number one problem in America. Um, we this is called the sugar blues based off a book written in the 70s. Has anybody heard about that book or know about that book? Okay, there was a book written in the 70s, and basically in that book that was written, he predicted everything that's happening now um, when it comes to sugar. Um, that sugar would be the number one addiction in America. That sugar would be the number one cause of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes in America. Um, again, we're so deceived um, not knowing where these, supposedly not knowing where these illnesses come from, and we absolutely know where they come from. Uh, the problem is, is um, if, if we have it in our mind, cloudy in our mind, and, and deceived in our mind, then we don't have to accept it, we don't have to do something about it. Um, so I, I, I'm big on the sugar issue because I grew up a sugar addict. I don't know if anyone can attest to that, but starting at the age of two years old, yeah, starting at the age of two years old, um, you know, it was sugar cereals and pop tarts and Kool-Aid, and I mean, this was every day throughout my childhood up until 30. Um, so it's something I've battled and struggled with my whole life, and it really, really affected my health in a majorly negative way. So that's why this is such a critically important subject to me, and I've studied it a lot. Um, so my goal tonight is to tell you the dangers of sugar, um, to teach you about uh, the history of sugar, um, which is critically important for understanding what's going on in our country. Um, understanding the history behind it will help a lot. And then finally, um, just to flat out, I don't pull any punches, to prove to you and show to you that sugar is an absolute poison. It is the most poisonous thing you can possibly put in your body and I'm going to prove that to you tonight. Uh, as we go along, if anybody has any questions, throw it up, we'll answer it right away, um, and we'll have some fun. Now, I don't have a little clicker, doohicker, so I'll probably be bending down to, to flip some oh, of these. Can I ask a and also, this is, what's that? Can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. Just right through, so I understand what you're doing. Uh, when you're saying sugar, are you talking about one type of sugar, or fructose sugar, or I, honey sugar? We're going to talk about all that. Okay, so you, that yeah, would be We'll part. definitely cover that. Oh yeah, because that, that's, that's the critical factor. Absolutely, that's okay. the critical factor. So, and we're not going to be really following the handout. That's more just for your information. We'll go over some of this stuff in there. And we'll jump around here too. I didn't create this presentation. I'm borrowing it from a friend. Um, so, uh, I'll, I'll jump around a little bit, but um, stay with me. Um, so, the critical thing to understand is that uh, whether you know it or not, you've heard it or not, you realize it or not, America is one of the most diseased nations in the entire world. Uh, we have triple the health care costs of this, the second, the, the country that spends the second most on health care, we triple that. Okay, and we're horribly riddled with illness and disease and it's only increasing and getting worse. So what's wrong? I mean, we have the technology. You know, we have the information, we have the knowledge. So what's the problem? Um, when it comes to food, I think sugar's it, okay? Um, I explained the history of, uh, um, of sugar, and if you look back through time, if you look at uh, the writings of the Egyptians, or the Greeks, the Romans, Hippocrates, you know, all these people throughout history, you'll find writings about cancer that existed, you know, you'll find writings about all different types of illnesses and diseases that we've been dealing with as humans, you know, throughout history. But what you don't find is you don't find any writings about diabetes. You don't find writings about blood sugar disorders because it did not exist. Okay, and I'll give you the history of when it started um, and how it's progressed into the number one thing killing people in America. So this is just a, a few of the basic things, and there's 78, a list of 78 things there. That handout I gave you is two pages. It's actually a six-page document because everything listed there has a reference tied to it. In other words, a medical study or an article, um, just to show that these things weren't just made up by somebody. Uh, there's actual studies proving these things. Um, so if you want the full, you know, bibliography or reference sheet, I can give it to you. But just for sake of a saving paper, I didn't do it all. But uh, probably the number one thing is suppresses the immune system. Um, this is huge. I mean, uh, and we could get into the science behind it, but I just want you to understand that uh, because sugar is toxic and it's a poison to the body, it's the number one thing that weakens their immune system. Probably most people have heard that sugar feeds cancer, right? Anybody heard that? Okay, sugar feeds cancer. 
Okay, well, sugar feeds everything else, too. Okay, it feeds everything. It feeds depression, it feeds stress and anxiety, it feeds all pathogens in the body. Okay, so parasites, fungus, candida, um, any type of infectious organism, viruses, things like that. Um, it is uh, absolute underlying indicating factor in all autoimmune conditions. Um, so you can look at, uh, again, most of the illnesses in America, and yeah, you can tie it to other things. There's other environmental toxins in our food supply, and we eat too much meat, and you know, there's a lot of things we don't do right in America that other cultures do better. But uh, the biggest one is sugar. And again, that's, that's my goal tonight, is just to, to, to show that to you, to drive that point home. Um, interferes with the absorption of calcium and magnesium. It's not just calcium and magnesium, it's all minerals. Okay, so if you're eating sugar, you're offsetting any minerals you're putting in your body. Okay, so you're not getting minerals into your system, into your tissues. And I heart, I mean, I do classes at my wellness center two nights a week. And there's not one class that goes by. And I have 120 videos on YouTube and on my, on my website if you want to check them out on everything you can possibly think of. Not a class goes by where I don't talk about the importance of water and minerals. Because we're not putting the basic foundational things in our body. And not only we're not supplementing properly, but we're eating sugar and other acidic foods on top of it um, that blocks our absorption of the nutrients that we need. So this is specific to calcium and magnesium um, because osteoporosis is a big deal. Um, and if you look at rates of osteoporosis around the world, um, it's the acidic foods that we're putting in our body that's causing osteoporosis. We are not calcium deficient, okay? You do not need to take calcium pills, okay? Um, gorillas and elephants and rhinoceros that have bones this big around don't take calcium pills and they don't get osteoporosis. Okay, there's something else going on. Okay, but we want to take a pill and fix our problem. That's the American mindset. Pill for every ill, right? Pill for every ill. Okay, there's something else going on. Okay, and it's the acidic nature of the food we're eating that's causing the osteoporosis. Does, does anybody know why or about acidity in the body or acid alkaline balance or pH balance? Heard about those kind of things? Okay. Well, just in a nutshell, uh, because we have a lot to go over tonight, but in a nutshell, the body has to maintain homeostasis within the blood, a pH of 7.4. If it doesn't do that, you won't live. You can't survive. You'll die. So as we bombard our body with coffee, soda, sugar, meat, dairy, everything in the American diet, none of which is good for us, our blood is constantly in an acidic state. And to counteract that, it has to pull calcium from the bones because that's an alkalizing mineral. And it has to do that to neutralize our blood and to keep us alive. Uh, one thing I always stress to people is everything that happens in the body is its best attempt to stay alive. I don't care what illness you have or how you feel or if you have a headache or an autoimmune condition or cancer. Yes, even cancer. Everything is a survival mechanism of the body because its goal is to maintain homeostasis and to maintain health. God did not create a body that just randomly malfunctions. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, we mentioned some of those. Uh, infectious issues linked with all, all inflammation. Okay? And I, I challenge people to do this. Um, if you're living with chronic pain, autoimmune condition, joint pain, gout, gouty arthritis, diabetes, and I the last two pages is how to reverse diabetes in less than 30 days because it's like the easiest illness on the planet to reverse. But uh, if you're dealing with any of those kind of things, now if, if you're in chronic pain because you were in an accident, that's a whole nother ballgame. You have severe damage to joints and ligaments and bones and things like that. That's a whole nother story. Okay, but if you've developed an illness where you're in constant pain, cut sugar out of your diet in two weeks. Learn how to completely cut sugar out and do it for two weeks as an experiment if you can do it, and I guarantee you, your pain will disappear. Guarantee it. I have people that I work with that every day, that I had a lady just this morning call me, and she said, I'm doing what you're saying. It's been five days without any sugar. My joint pain is gone. And people have joint pain for years and years and years and years and live with it. And it's completely unnecessary. And the main reason is sugar. So if my husband has arthritis, and I get him off sugar for two weeks, yep. that pain's going to go away. Absolutely. <laughs> and he can give back those two artificial knees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obesity, um, we're going to talk about sugar and how it's metabolized in the body. Um, it turns into fat. Okay. Yeah. One of my favorite sayings is, fat doesn't make you fat, sugar makes you fat. 
okay? You need fat, you need olive oil, you need flax oil, you need coconut, you need avocados, you need nuts and seeds. Uh, when we talk about the history of things, we'll see how um, we, we set our disease rates soaring through the roof in the 70s because we put everybody on a no-fat or low-fat diet and everybody was eating sugar, okay? The worst possible combination in the history of mankind, okay? So just complete ignorance. Um, and we've learned now that that's not right, but people don't like to admit their mistakes. So there's still a lot of misinformation out there. Um, but obesity, big deal, big deal. Uh, <coughs> cholesterol and blood pressure, cholesterol's fat, okay? It's sugar being converted into fat in the bloodstream. Um, when sugar is converted into fat in the bloodstream, the body either has to get rid of it because it's a poison, or it's gonna store it as fat. Again, everything the body does is its best attempt at preservation. So is, is fat the body's way of neutralizing? Absolutely. The sugar? Yep, all toxins and poisons are stored in the fat cells. They're fat soluble. Um, collagen structure, <laughs> so wrinkles, wrinkles, things like that. Sugar, it breaks down the collagen matrix that makes up skin, bones, joints, ligaments, tissues. Sugar. Uh, triglycerides, which is fats. Now, can I ask a question? Of course. Uh, sugar and carbohydrates, are they're linked, I assume? Well, sugar is a carbohydrate. Car right. Carbohydrates basically it, is sugar. Right. Okay. So you're talking about carbohydrates at the same time. I am. We'll, 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 I'll break it down more as we go. Okay. I'll break it down. <laughs> sure it sense. Keep, remember that if I don't break it down enough for you. Okay. But we, we should cover that. With, um, the, with the fat that you said the sugar and the yes. toxins are stored in the fat, is that why? I mean, I've had more than two or three friends that lose 30, 40 pounds or more and then they have like gallstones or something. That, is that? Big time. Is that like? Yeah, related. let me address that real quick. This is a okay. great question. It's one of the biggest deal problems in America. Um, gallstones, okay? I dealt with gallstones in a major way. You can actually see them on my face. It's this crease right here between my uh, eyebrows, okay? I grew up eating meat three meals a day, drinking milk, and eating ice cream every day. Correct. Anybody? Uh, yeah, can anybody attest to that? Okay, those are the foods that create gallstones in the body, okay? Gallstones block the entire liver, gallbladder, bile duct system. It's one of the biggest problems and, and areas of disease in America. People don't know it until they're crippled over in pain, running to the hospital, getting their gallbladder removed. But it's been a problem for 10, 15, 20 years before it gets to that state because um, the body has been fighting it. Um, what happens is, is people have gallstones because of the standard American diet. They go on these crash fad diets, they lose weight, and all those stones get stuck in their system. And it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, so does that answer that? Okay. Okay. So it's so, not the toxins that it's trying to get rid of. It's the, the gallstones were already there. The gallstones are already there, right? Okay. And when you lose the weight, um, honestly, for lack of a better description, you know, you've you've lost some of the space in which those gallstones were, <laughs> you know, there. You know, so that weight disappears. And a lot of times, those fat diets, people lose water weight. They don't actually lose toxins from their fat cells because they don't detoxify their body. And then that's why they gain it right back. Yo-yos. That's just. I'm not a fan of diets. It's all about lifestyle change if you really want to be healthy. It's just, lifestyle change is hard for some people because we don't want to take responsibility for our own health. We're used to going to the doctor and taking a pill. So, so depression, another big deal. Um, I am doing a class uh, for the mental, uh, it's the American Mental Health, health Association. It gives people alternatives to medications besides depression. Um, alternatives to depression besides medications. I think I said that backwards. <laughs> but, uh, Sugar, absolutely, we'll be talking about. I mean, it's a, it's a horrible, horrible catch-22. Because when you eat sugar, you immediately feel that euphoric high, okay? But if, it, it'll, it'll cause depression, and it'll keep you in a state of depression. So it's, it's man, it's, it's just a dangerous place to be. Um, How does that uh, affect you talking mood swings and anxiety then? Mood swings and anxiety? Yeah. Um, sugar, specifically? Yeah. Because of the highs and lows, or what? Um, you have to look at uh, the effect that it has on certain glands and organ systems in the body. Uh, one of the main ones, uh, the main ones would be the liver and the adrenal glands. I talk a lot about the adrenal glands. Uh, but the adrenal glands get completely destroyed by sugar because when we're putting sugar in the body, just like caffeine and things like that, the body has to release, redu um, release hormones, steroid hormones, to deal with that toxin and that toxicity. Okay, and over time, that breaks down the adrenal glands. Our adrenal glands 
are the gland that produce the hormones that help us deal with the stress and anxiety response. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you build up your adrenals, you have strong adrenals, you're producing hormones so that we're all going to deal with stress, but you're able to deal with it. You're able to deal with life and deal with things that are thrown at you much easier and better in a calm and relaxed state. That's why hormones, hormones are so critical. And you'll have, again, you eat high sugar and low fat, you can't produce hormones. Because how are hormones produced? Hormones are produced by fat, by cholesterol. Okay? You need cholesterol. Your liver produces every cholesterol every single day for a reason, because your body needs it. So did that answer it? So the adrenal glands are basically uh, immobilized or affected by the intake of sugar? Is that what you're yeah, saying? well, they, 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 they have to respond to it. They have to respond to it. They're forced to respond <laughs> to it, and if you're uh, abusing that on a daily basis, it's going to break down the adrenals eventually. And so then the adrenal then, is that the anxiety or depression is a result of the hormones being out of balance because of the adrenal system? Yeah, because the adrenals it? can't produce the hormones anymore. They can't, they can't, uh, yeah, they can't produce the hormones anymore. And they just start to get weak. Yep. Okay, so uh, here's just a few interesting facts about sugar. Um, we know as an absolute fact that sugar is addictive. Okay? Um, it is addictive as alcohol, <laughs> drugs, heroin, cocaine. It's, it triggers the exact same dopamine receptors in the brain that drugs do. Okay? The problem is we live in a society where uh, I talk a lot about acute poisons versus chronic poisons. Okay? Uh, acute poisons we know will damage us and kill us, um, like over-consuming alcohol and doing heroin and things like that. Um, acute poisons we seem to think are okay for us. Okay? So in other words, uh, sugar has the same toxic effects that alcohol does. It actually reacts the exact same way in the body that alcohol does. Literally the exact same way. So I tell people, if you're a sugar addict, you're an alcoholic. You just don't know it. Okay? has the exact same effect on the body. But because it's an acute poison, in other words, you do it every day and it has a cumulative effect, instead of dying or, or, uh, or uh, you know, you can be an alcoholic for a long period of time as well and, you know, not, not necessarily die, but um, the effects are more dramatic, let's just say. <clears throat> so when you're con consuming sugar every day, you might not uh, develop an illness or a disease right away. But 10, 20, 30 years down the road, or as you get into your middle ages and older age, you're suffering from all of these things we talked about. Depression, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, lupus, um, uh, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, the big three. Um, so acute poisons cause these diseases and cause us to suffer for years and years and years and years and years. Okay. And, and chronic poisons are... What's that? You said chronic poisons are... Chronic poison would be like drinking a glass of arsenic. Okay. I'm sorry, that would be an acute I'm say, poison. I'm going to say you're, you're reversing it. I, I reversed it, you're right. Acute poison would be something that would kill you immediately. You I think I did now. say that backwards. Yeah. Thank you. So acute poison is something that would kill you immediately. A, a chronic, chronic poison, poison is something that... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep, thank you. So sugar is everywhere. We're going to talk about that. Um, actually, I'll, I'll just show you real quick. Um, I'm going to show you some places sugar are because, you know, I work with a lot of people and one of the first things I try to deal with is the sugar issue because the fact of the matter is, is if you take the sugar out of your diet, um, depending on what you're dealing with, you're going to feel better if you just learn how to do it. Um, but I, I ask people if they do sugar and they're like, no, I don't really do much sugar. But I think a lot of people have a misconception of what sugar is and they think because they're not eating donuts every day or, or drinking soda or maybe just a couple sodas a week that they don't do sugar, okay? Sugar has completely inundated our food supply. Um, our whole food supply in America is poison. Um, I know that's a pretty powerful statement, but it's, it's an absolute fact. Um, I think most of us are aware that when American food goes overseas, the people in those countries who used to be healthy suddenly start getting heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and autoimmune conditions. Okay, that's not a secret. Um, here's a random fact. Um, do you know what the top three exports are out of the United States? Probably Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Food is one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Weapons yeah. and entertainment, Hollywood. Yeah. Okay, but huh. the, if, if the rest of the world knew how poisonous our food supply was, they'd stop buying it. 
Um, the reason I tell you that is because that's why there's so much deception going on in the media, okay, with diabetes, the American Diabetes Association, um, you know, not admitting that there's a link between sugar and diabetes. They'll say, sugar doesn't cause diabetes, but if you get diabetes, you want to watch and control your sugar intake. It's complete confusion. Okay, I saw this on a poster posted in a high school. There's no known link between sugar and diabetes, but if you get diabetes, you really want to be careful and watch your sugar intake. Okay, and we wonder why we're all so confused on this subject. It's, it's, it's out of control. Um, so let me show you some of the uh, examples because it is in uh, condiments, salad dressings, uh, water. You think you're drinking water? Nope, you're drinking sugar. Um, so here's Propel water. Um, and this is the amount of white table sugar that's in the equivalent. This one's really bad. This is the Sobe Life water. Anybody ever had one of those? Uh, Snapple. Okay. Tons now, is of sugar. That the, sugar in the percent of sugar in that? Right. The amount of uh, sugar you'd actually be consuming. If you drank a bottle of Pepsi, you'd eat this much sugar. This much white table that? sugar. Is that like a fourth a cup? Uh, probably in one soda. That's more like a half a cup. Of one soda. Um, this one's peanut butter. You know, there's a lot of sugar. This one's probably the worst. This is ketchup. Wow. One bottle of ketchup. Can you believe that? No. It's out of control. Okay. <laughs> it's frightening. Um, even things you think are, you know, good, like salsa. You know, make your own salsa at home. It's not that hard. Um, Prego. Um, Here's vitamin water. Ooh, yummy. Uh, and, and, and the problem is, is, you know, even when we go to Whole Foods and buy things, I mean, this is an organic uh, vegetable fruit juice blend. Look how much sugar is in that. Okay? You have to be really careful. Um, it's just, it's everywhere. We're completely inundated with it. So um, we have to be careful and start to read food labels and things of that nature. Uh, let's see. Um, I always talk about the illnesses we get in America. Um, it's just, it's really sad to me. Um, the illnesses we get in America, I always say, are diseases of affluence, um, diseases of extravagance, and you can see this all throughout history. You can see the people who were healthy and of normal weight, and you can see the people who were getting big and diseased. It was usually the, the rich and the elite that could afford it. Um, so I always say that the, the diseases we get in America, most other cultures can't afford. Okay, but we're spoiled Americans, and we can have what we want when we want. We got 24/7 stores. We have a craving. We just go do it, you know. And that's it's just from being spoiled. It's unfortunate. Um, artificial sweeteners not the answer, you know. Neurotoxins. Uh, aspartame is the number one complaint received by the FDA. Thousands and thousands and thousands of reports are um, are uh, complaints against aspartame by the FDA every year. When it first came out in the 50s, it was not approved. The scientists said it was too dangerous for humans to consume. Okay, um, there was some lobbying going on, and it got passed. It's illegal in Europe. Okay, we're poisoned in America because oftentimes money trumps people. So, um, artificial sweeteners definitely not the answer. <coughs> so this is just uh, just kind of a funny thing about the sugar cycle. Um, you get up in the morning, you do sugar. Um, so at about 10 o'clock, you're tired again because you're on this, this roller coaster, especially if you're eating donuts or coffee and things like that. Um, so you're, it's a roller coaster. Um, and then by the time it gets to 3, 4 o'clock, I mean, literally, you're dying for fuel because um, your body hasn't had any nutrition. And um, you'll eat anything that has sugar on it. It says that you'd eat a brick if it had sugar on it. Um, and uh, this is just a constant battle because we're in this constant loop of, uh, of uh, highs and lows that sugar costs. Mm -hmm. There's no balance. Uh, America is sugar and salt, sugar and salt. Those are the two complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Okay, we need to be here and we're yo-yoing back and forth between sugar and salt. We have no balance in our systems because of the food we eat. Okay. <laughs> So uh, basically what, what, what happens is, just this is just a quick little picture, um, when sugar enters the bloodstream, okay, the body's only going to use a certain amount that it can. It needs a certain amount of fuel, 
okay? That's where carbohydrates are important. You need fuel for your system. But when it's more than the body can handle, okay, it increases insulin, okay, which tells the adrenals to produce steroids because there's a poison and we have to neutralize it, which lowers blood sugar, which makes you crave sugar again, okay? So, hence the roller coaster, okay? Um, if you eat, if you avoid sugar, and you put good healthy things like good fats and olive oil and things like that in your system, you have sustainable fuel throughout the day and you don't go through this roller coaster. So that's one of the big tricks to overcoming um, sugar uh, addiction is um, uh, increasing your good fat intake. Critically important. So this is just what I explained. Um, the, the, the cycle. Um, increased blood sugar, insulin rises, um, so it's going to store it as fat, um, what it can't use. Um, Again, adrenal glands produce steroid hormones, uh, drops the blood sugar, and then it's just this vicious cycle. So now, oh, okay, I'm gonna skip this. <laughs> Sorry, there's just a lot to cover. Okay, history of sugar. This is, this, is, this is where the money's at, man. This is where we learn what the heck happened, okay? Because like I said, if you look back throughout history, all the doctors up until the mid to late 1600s did not talk about diabetes. Okay, it was first written about by an English physician okay, under King Charles in the late 1600s. Okay, it was the exact same time when England started importing sugar, processed sugar from around the world. <laughs> it became such an epidemic in England um, that this doctor wanted to tell the whole world, but he couldn't because King Charles made them shut up about it because they were making a lot of money off of the sugar trade. Okay, so this is when the problem started. Okay, so then you fast forward to America. Okay, this didn't really come a big problem until the 20th century because for the most part we were just using a little bit of sugar here and there. It wasn't in our food supply. We were still living on farms and growing food and eating fresh foods and things like that. We might run to the, the local um, market or whatever and grab a bag of sugar to make some cookies once in a while but it wasn't in every single food we eat okay until the uh basically about the uh the 1970s the mid 1970s when it really 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 started to become an epidemic was in the mid 1970s what happened the japanese actually invented high fructose corn syrup in 1967. in 1974 it came to america okay that's when disease went through the roof. They were telling everybody to eat no fat, and everybody was starting to put sugar in everything. It's, that's when it started inundating our food supply. Why? It's cheap. It's cheap, simple as that, and it's really, really sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna explain um, more about um, the history of sugar, um, but the consumption has gone from about 12 pounds per person to today about 155 pounds per person. Okay, so that means for the people who aren't eating any, any sugar, there's people eating 300 pounds of sugar a year. Okay, this is an average. And why? Again, because it's in everything. So now I'm going to explain to you the critical component. What sugar is doing this? What sugar is causing this problem? What have we had for sugar throughout history? What have we had? Cane, sugar cane. Sugar cane, okay. What else? Honey. What's that? It's a honey. Absolutely. <laughs> Honey, what else? Fruits? <coughs> Certain <coughs> sweet vegetables? <coughs> Yams and squash and things like that that are naturally sweet. Uh, carrots are naturally maple, sweet. Maple syrup? Yeah, maple syrup. <laughs> Absolutely. So, bam, you hit the nail on the head. What do we have today for sugar? I mean, you couldn't even get a name, right? Oh. <laughs> There's a, 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 a bazillion things, mm -hmm. right? So, all throughout history, we've had sugar to eat. It's not that we don't need sweet foods. We do. It's not that we don't need the fuel for the energy, the glucose. We do. Um, it's the processing of the sugar that's the problem. Okay, so let's look at cane sugar, the first thing you mentioned. This is critical. Okay, who's seen cane sugar? Nobody's seen it? Have you felt it? Have you touched it? Have you played with it? Have you well, tasted it? I've sucked on cane. In You've sucked on South cane America, sugar? Yeah. Okay, what does cane sugar look like? Yeah, well, what I've seen is brown and crumbly. Okay, yeah. in, in its raw form, like before it's been processed or anything. It's liquid, isn't it? I mean, I'm talking sugar cane in the fields. Yeah, it's, it's liquid. It's yeah, chewy and uh, 
gummy. It's like a sack. Sugar cane is a stick. Yeah, it looks like, okay? like, it looks like bamboo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. stick. Yeah. Okay? God designed it that way on purpose. Okay? How much sugar do you think you can get out of a stick, even if you suck on that thing all day long? See where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Okay? So, where God put a poison, he put the cure. Okay? So anywhere he put something that was not good for the body, he put the cure, which is fiber. Okay? That's why fiber is so critically important to our diets. That's why it's so critically important we eat whole foods. Okay? How much sugar cane does it take to make a pound of uh, raw granulated sugar? A whole lot. lot. <laughs> Almost a half an acre. Wow. Half an acre of sugar cane to make a pound of granulated sugar. Okay? Were we ever, ever in a bazillion years meant to eat that in that, in that quantity, in that form? No. Because God gave it to us in a stick. <laughs> so that we couldn't do that. Right? So, it's funny if you look back at the, uh, the, the well, plantation how, workers. How, how did they do it? Huh? Who had the idea to do that? I have no idea. Yeah. I mean... To take a stick and make it into sugar. Yeah, I know. Good question. Um, somebody did. Yeah, <laughs> somebody well, cut good. it and noticed it had some liquid and... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and like, oh, we can process this. Yeah. 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 So, if you look at the sugarcane workers in the field, they were munching on this stuff all day, and it was giving them energy and making them feel good, and they were thin and they were healthy. Okay? The people who were getting the diseases were the people who owned the company and were eating the processed refined sugar, not the workers in the fields. Okay? You can eat honey, you can eat fruit, you can eat sugarcane and things like that. It'll give you fuel, you'll burn it. Plus, you're working all day. That's another thing. The body was meant to move. Okay, when you move, you know, you burn up sugar and fuel before it converts into fat, before it damages and intoxifies the system. Okay, so that is what happens. Um, so the main culprits are the cane sugar, okay, and it's really any processed sugar, any concentrated amount of sugar. Um, and the other big one is high fructose corn sugar and beets to a certain extent as well. So a lot of our processed sugar comes from beets. Sugar cane and that and, and corn. That's the vast majority. That's ninety nine percent of it right there. That's in our food supply. Okay, because it's cheap, it's easy, it increases shelf life. It's so so super sweet. So Americans are going to be attracted to that. You know. So there's a lot of benefits to the food companies, not the rest of America, but a lot of benefits to the food companies for utilizing this product. Um, it is so dangerous, and there's been so many studies done confirming the danger of it. They have sent out a huge ad campaign trying to brainwash us into telling us that this is a natural food. If anybody's seen those commercials, has anybody seen any of those commercials? A couple of you. Um, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Um, so that explains what's going on in America. It's inundated our food supply, and it's the processing of it that's caused the problem. So <clears throat> to alleviate it, and we'll talk about it the, that at the end. One of the keys is just eating whole, fresh foods. You know, again, we're confused. Oh my gosh, our apple's good for us. And, you know, they have sugar. Oh my gosh. You know, it's understanding um, our food supply and what's going on with our food supply that'll help you determine what you need to eat, what foods you need to eat. So real quick on the toxicity of sugar, I just want to make this point um, because I think it's fascinating. I just love the, the human body just fascinates me. Um, one thing I mentioned earlier is that everything that the body does is always a, a self-healing mechanism, trying, trying to... Do the best what's, you know, what's best for you to keep you healthy and to keep you alive. Um, the sugar is a perfect example of that. So what happens when sugar enters the bloodstream? Okay, like when caffeine enters the bloodstream. When these types of toxins enter the bloodstream, again, the body has to neutralize them in some way or eliminate them or store them. What will happen is, um, it, and it burns the whole system to try to do this. The kidneys are working on it. The liver is working on it. You know, and uh, We'll just take the kidneys as an example, okay, because I'm big on hydration and minerals and kidney health and things like that. So all the sugar enters the bloodstream. The kidney is supposed to process it and remove it. Um, a lot of people eat a lot of sugar. They'll actually have a sweet urine smell because <laughs> um, the body's trying to get rid of this stuff. If there's more than the body can handle and get rid of, guess what? The urine is now floating through your bloodstream because the kidneys can't eliminate it. I like to gross people out so it like makes them think. But, <laughs> It's true. I mean, if your urine can't be excreted, um, your urine will, will stay trapped in your bloodstream. Okay? So these toxins from the sugar stay trapped in your bloodstream. Okay, now we're going to talk about how disease forms. It's fascinating. So 
again, the body's trying to keep you healthy. Can't have toxins in the bloodstream. Okay? The blood cycles through your whole body every three and a half minutes. It supplies nutrients to your liver and your kidneys and every organ and every body system. Can't have them in the bloodstream, so it's got to get rid of them. So it starts to deposit them. Okay? Where is it going to deposit them first? Any guesses? Joints. Kidney, liver. Joints. Any other guesses? She got it. So. <laughs> um, the least amount of circulation in your entire body is where? Anybody have a guess? Your big toe. Okay. Get Anybody heard gout? Mm -hmm. Gouty arthritis? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're eating so much sugar, the body can't handle it. It has to start depositing it to keep you healthy and to keep your blood clean. It's going to start sticking it in your big toe. Okay. <laughs> and as that toxicity increases, it's going to spread to your other toes. It's going to spread to your feet. It's going to spread up to your knees. It's going to go in your hands because that's another extremity. Okay. So the extremities where there's the least amount of circulation is where the body deposits toxins and poisons. It's keeping it away from your brain. It's keeping it away from your liver. It's keeping it away from your kidneys because you need those to survive. You don't need your fingers or feet to survive. Your body will sacrifice your feet to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So everything that happens in the body happens for an absolute reason. Okay. So that's where joint pain and arthritis and gout and all these things come from. Um, is this buildup of toxicity in the body. That's why when I work with people, I just, I stress to them, and I even tell them, I'm like, these supplements will benefit you. However, don't waste your money on these supplements if you're not going to change the way you eat. If you don't, not that you're going to be perfect, but be conscious of it and start to eliminate sugar from your diet. Eliminate the worst thing first, like soda, you know, and just be progressive about it. Because if you don't do that, you can take all the best supplements and never ever benefit and never get rid of your joint pain. You're like, because people want to just take a supplement and fix themselves, right? So if you don't do a combination of both, it's not going to work. So okay? is that why exercise is so helpful? Because it speeds up your blood flow and it gets it into your, your joints and things like Bingo. that. Bingo. I mean, we're going to talk about it later, but we'll go, we'll go ahead and say it. I, I, I laugh about exercise because we have this old, like, 60s mentality that um, we have, it's like calories in, calories out. And I got to burn 400 calories today because I ate. X, Y, Z, you know, cookies. so I'm going to burn, I ate three cookies, I'm going to burn 300 calories worth of cookies, right? Okay, that's not why we exercise, okay? We exercise to increase our blood flow and to increase our metabolism, because why? If the body's moving and you're eating food, it will burn that as fuel before it's able to toxify the body, before it's able to deposit or it's able to be stored as fat. That's why we exercise. It has nothing to do with calories in, calories out. Calories, not a calorie. An apple, 100 calories of apple is not the same as 100 calories of pure cane sugar, right? Obviously. Okay? So a calorie is not a calorie. So that's old science. That's silly. But you do need to move. Okay? That is critically important. Absolutely. Um, so does that make sense about the body and toxicity? I and mean, we could talk a lot about more about the liver and other organs, but it's all fun. But why the body starts to deposit toxins in different places <coughs> when these diseases come up? Okay? So modern medicine... It's just, oh man, it's just so frustrating to me. But um, they put names on these diseases so that they can sell drugs for them. Um, but let me give you a few, just an example, because I think you'll find this fascinating. So if you get start, those toxins start deposit in the joints, they're going to say you have what? Arthritis. Arthritis. Okay, sometimes toxins deposit in the muscle tissues. What do they call that? Fibromyalgia. Sometimes the toxins deposit in the nervous system. What do they call that? Multiple sclerosis. Okay. It's all the same thing. It's all toxins in the body. They just store in different places. So anybody has chronic pain throughout their body that developed over time, it's from sugar. Period. You gotta figure out how to get it out of your life. So it's not easy. Like I said, I grew up a sugar addict, okay? It's not easy, okay? But I'm gonna give you some tips to do it. Um, so just diabetes rates increasing. Okay, so now a little bit about now, again, I didn't create this, so I don't really agree with this list, but you got to look at what we've had again throughout history. We've had honey, we've had dates, other fruits, you know, we've had uh, sweet vegetables, you know, these are the kind of things we've had for sugar. It's the processed stuff you got to eliminate from your life. So, one of the keys I tell people is learn how to read food labels. You want to know the easiest way to read food labels? This is so easy. Stop reading food labels. Farmer's market? Fresh food, have your own garden. Crazy concept that we used to do not more than two generations ago. You know where food, all food, it wasn't purchased in a grocery store. 
So stop reading food labels. We're so big on like, we gotta read food labels, I gotta see if there's this, how many calories, blah, 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 blah. You know, that's all created to confuse us, okay, because we don't know what to eat. All we have to eat is what God provided to us. Fruits and vegetables, whole grains, okay? It's not hard, we hear it like all the time, um, but we're still confused about it because we wanna eat the other things that we like, that are processed, that are the best for us. Like, for example, um, and I did this in my transition, I'm like, Okay, I used to eat Kraft macaroni and cheese every day, <laughs> so now I get the Annie's natural macaroni and cheese because I wanted to fool myself into thinking that that was good for me. Okay, that's what we do. Okay, that's not a good strategy. I can tell you that. I can speak from experience. Not a good strategy. Okay, learn how to eat whole, fresh foods. Okay, it's critically important. And you don't have to worry about these problems. Um, so some of the uh, good healthy sugars um, would be... I really just focus on these two, um, the raw honey and the stevia. Stevia is a plant, it's 200 times sweeter than sugar, um, there's zero sugar in it, um, and you know, there's so many ways you can use stevia, I mean, for example, you want lemonade, glass of water, squeeze a lemon, two drops of stevia, you got lemonade, tastes fantastic, okay, zero sugar in it, okay, so you can transition off of, of sugar, uh, your taste buds can change, fascinating fact, taste buds are renewed in your body every seven days. So if you can fast sugar for a while, you will start to change your taste buds, okay? Just like people who don't like water or don't like vegetables or whatever, you can change your body chemistry, absolutely. The body continually renews and regenerates itself, okay? You just gotta take the mindset to do it. Um, contrast raw honey with processed honey. What's that? Pro contrast raw honey with processed honey. Most of the stuff you're gonna buy in the store it's going to be processed honey, it's heated, okay? When it's heated, the glycemic index goes into <coughs> the roof, okay? Suddenly, um, it's a, a, really a toxic food to the body, a toxic sugar. It's gonna enter straight into the bloodstream. If you eat raw honey, you know, that hasn't been processed, heated, anything like that, and why they pasteurize honey is an atrocity to me, it makes no sense. I mean, it's the only food on the entire planet that never, ever, ever spoils. It's the, one of the most antibacterial things on the planet. I mean, you put it on a wound and it feels like that. Wounds, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal stuff. We're just, we're just, we're just crazy. But uh, find a local uh, farm, farmer's market right here again. Yeah. You know, do you guys have honey here? here? Oh, yeah. Oh, Joey yeah. and Cecil uh, have it out in the, the, uh, the market. Everything, I buy a gallon of it. Yeah, and, and it's straight from, from the beekeeper. Containers and straight from honey. the beekeeper. It's a yeah. wonderful product they have here. Yeah, it's very good. So... You know, that's the kind of stuff we need to learn to do. And again, we're not going to be perfect. We're going to go to a party once in a while. We're going to go to a function once in a while. And that's okay. But learn, be conscious of it. Be aware of it. Learn to get it out of your life. If you do develop something or somebody you love develops something, let them know about this information. Because it can, like I said, it can literally reverse their condition in less than a month. Okay? Um, so any questions about the, the sugars? I didn't get too much into that because there's a couple other things. And still maple want to syrup is also a good choice. Yeah, maple syrup's okay. I'm okay with maple syrup. Yeah, and again, it just it really needs to be in moderation. Sure. I mean, I, I always talk about joke about vegetarians because I am one, and it took me five years to get to be one. Um, but the, one of the main mistakes vegetarians make is they all think they're all cool because they don't eat meat, <laughs> but they're eating sugar all day long. They're still eating processed foods. I mean, you can still eat pizza and donuts and all kinds of garbage and be a vegetarian, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, why, that's why so many vegetarians sure. are so unhealthy. I mean, they still have the same addictions everybody else does, you know? So anyway, um, I just, I laugh about that. Um, How about the agave nectar? How would you rate that? Um, agave nectar, I would say be very, very careful with. It is straight sugar. Um, and, and the word I didn't give you, I didn't give you the key word, or the key word is fructose, okay? Fructose is the dangerous chemical, we can call it, that enters the liver, okay, and has a hard time being converted into energy and is turned into fat. Okay, it's the fructose. Okay, now don't, don't be overly confused because fructose means fruit sugar, so it's found naturally in fruits, right? But again, God's provided the cure in that with the fiber. If we eat the whole fruit, okay, controls the release of the sugar into the bloodstream because of the fiber content, okay? I did a, uh, uh, my last newsletter, I did a, um, Four Secrets of the Fast Food Industry, and uh, this is so critical. Um, people don't know what's going on like with fast food and why we're eating and eating and eating and eating. I mean, there's multiple reasons. One is there's zero nutrition in the food, I and mean, that's a no-brainer. I mean, it's cheap garbage. I mean, if you can buy a dollar for a hamburger, I mean, do you really think there's anything of value in there? Um, the second reason is because there's no fiber in it. 
Okay, this is critical. Uh, if you look at the McDonald's menu, everything on the menu has less than one gram of fiber. Everything. Okay, have you ever eaten a bowl of oatmeal this big? Did it make you full? Eat a couple apples, you feel full, okay? How come you can eat a, a Big Mac and fries and all this stuff and like an hour later you're hungry? There's no fiber in it. You never feel full when you don't eat fiber. Okay, what do we eat in America? Meat, how much fiber? Zero. Dairy, how much fiber? Zero. Sugar, how much fiber? Zero. Okay, we don't eat fiber. <clears throat> okay, so we never satisfy ourselves. We're continuing to acidify in our bloodstream and we wonder why we're the most diseased nation on the planet. Okay, it all has to do with the food we eat. Okay. Um, what else? I don't think I'm going to go over the rest of this. Um, let me let me just go over uh, just some some things you can do to uh, eliminate this problem. Okay. Um, I I you know I work with a lot of people with diabetes and you know it, it's really up to the person if they want to fix it or not. I mean because they're totally in control. They just need to learn how to get sugar out of their lives. If they get sugar out of their lives, it'll fix themselves. I didn't do anything. Okay. They just take it out of their life and the insulin stops spiking and being produced and you, your blood sugar normalizes and you stop becoming insulin resistant and you don't have it anymore. It's as simple as that. Isn't it a basic understanding that diabetes is a result of sugar? Absolutely. Or closely related? And doesn't every diabetic know that? Um, here's the problem. I'm glad you said that. Okay, so what happens if you go to, uh, I, I kind of break it down for you. If you go to the third page where it says blood sugar disorders, how to reverse in 30 days. This is what happens. We develop diabetes from eating sugar. Okay? And we may inherently or instinctually know that it was the sugar that caused it, or we may have, might have heard it. But you go to the doctor and what do they say? If you take metformin and you take insulin, your blood sugar is balanced. You can eat sugar, you can eat your bread, you can eat your pasta, you can eat your Snickers. In fact, you should, because if you feel weak or you feel tired, you need sugar. So go ahead and eat your sugar, but just make sure you take the metformin and the insulin. Okay? This is infuriating, and I'll tell you why. It does not stop the disease process. You're still putting sugar in your body. Sugar is still a poison. You're still going to lose your feet. Okay? Diabetics been on medications for 20 years. They still lost their feet, still got heart disease, still got cancer. Okay? Modern medicine and drugs don't fix problems. They band-aid problems. So if you want to fix your problems, you have to change your life. Okay? Otherwise, you're doing disease maintenance. Okay? That's what conventional medicine does, is they want to maintain your disease for the rest of your life. You're on medication for the rest of your life. Okay? This is just unfortunate, but it's what's happening. Okay? So does that answer that? Okay. So you have to change your life. You don't stop the disease process. Um, so how do you do it? Let me give you the steps that I created um, to reverse this. And you know, it, it, it's, it's easy, um, but it's not. Uh, again, we're, we've grown up on processed foods and we're just used to working busy and we want things that are convenient and you know, we're last minute so we run through the drive-thru or whatever, whatever. And it's so inundated on our food supply we can't avoid it. Okay, so here's some steps you can do. The first one is eliminate all sugared beverages. Okay, there's no such thing as a healthy sugared beverage. Period. Period. Okay, that includes fruit juices. Okay, that includes that junk I showed you, the Sobe Life Water and the Vitamin Water and the Gatorade and all that stuff. It's loaded with sugar. Okay, so um, this would be uh, V8 juice. It would be <coughs> all of this stuff. Okay. Um, I, I, I always use the phrase um, over and over that we are the only mammals that exist on the entire planet that are dumb enough to drink anything besides water. If you look at the entire animal kingdom, there's not one exception to that. Okay? Why are we not drinking water? Why are we drinking everything but water? Okay, because we want what tastes good. Now, if you had fresh mountain spring water, it would taste good. And I have people put minerals in their water that makes it taste good. And they like it. And they finally get hydrated for the first time. That's a critical, critical step to regaining your health. But you've got to take the sugared beverages out of your life, okay? Because that's immediate sugar to the bloodstream, immediate. D waking up every morning, drinking orange juice, madness, okay? There's no nutrition in that. There's no vitamin C. Vitamin C is the most unstable vitamin on the planet. As soon as they pick that orange and process it, vitamin C, bye-bye. 
Okay, you're totally being lied to. You have no idea. Okay, plus they pasteurize it and everything else on top of it. Okay, it's not healthy to drink orange juice every morning. We have to change our mindset. Okay, um, in fact, I tell people that if they want to um, really change their health, the first step you do is when you get up in the morning, you drink two big glasses of water. Okay, put lemon in it. Put some mm. greens in it, like you a good greens citrus, powder with alfalfa citrus, grass, barley citrus grass. Cell in it? What's that? And you put citrus, citrus cell in it. <laughs> citrus cell. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, drink water in the morning. What do we do? When, in, what do we drink in the morning? Coffee. 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 Does that make any sense at all? Okay. Do we know that coffee dehydrates the body? Mm -hmm. Do you know how badly coffee dehydrates the body? It takes three cups of water to remove one cup of coffee from the body. Okay. So we just slept eight hours which means we're dehydrated, mm -hmm. we haven't had any water for eight hours, we get up, we drink coffee, okay? That removes three cups of water from our body for the one, and we wonder why we're in a chronic state of dehydration, okay? So, first thing you do in the morning is drink two big glasses of water, some greens, some lemon juice, maybe some apple cider vinegar. 30 minutes after you do that, if you feel hungry, eat breakfast. Have a cup of coffee but hydrate yourself when you wake up in the morning. It'll change your life. When I started doing that, all of a sudden, I wasn't tired in the afternoon anymore. Imagine that. You know, I was hydrated, I had minerals, I felt good. You know, I rarely eat breakfast. I'm not saying I don't. I eat breakfast once in a while, I feel like having an omelet or some potatoes and onions or whatever, you know? But uh, oftentimes I don't. Um, and I never, ever, ever, ever get tired in the afternoon, ever. So, and I used to, you know, I work corporate and. I'd go to lunch and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't like stay awake for the rest of the afternoon while I was at work. It's like, duh, yeah. <laughs> you know? That's so sure. um, step two is eliminating the high fructose corn syrup, figuring out where this stuff is. Okay, so it's the cane sugar, it's the high fructose corn syrup, which is the corn sugar. So it's been cleverly renamed so much. <laughs> um, Dan, have you guys heard this? It's been renamed? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's now just called corn syrup. Okay, but it has about 30 other names. So you gotta read the food labels. So dextrose, maltose, sorbitol, uh, xanthan gum, maltodextrin, I mean sorbitol, I mean it's, it's in a million different things, okay? But it's the high fructose corn syrup, the corn syrup, the cane syrup, the cane sugar, those are the main things you wanna avoid. Fructose, obviously, nothing added. So if you are buying a product and you're reading food labels, you know, one of the keys is look for as few ingredients as possible. I mean, you can actually go buy wild rice and in bulk, and you don't have to read the ingredient list for that. You, know, you can buy a, some black bean soup and it's gonna have like beans and salt, it's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we just, we just gotta make wiser choices. Um, and like I said, it's in everything, so don't just think it's pastries and soda pop and things like that. Okay, you really gotta be careful about your condiments, you know, your ketchup, your salad dressing, your ranch dressing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because uh, there's definitely good alternatives. The next step is eliminating everything white. Now, it's not quite as dangerous as sugar, okay, but it's the same concept. If it's white rice, if it's white flour, if it's white sugar, what did they do? Took all the minerals out. Yeah. Took the minerals out, took the fiber out, took out everything mm. that might cause that to spoil, hence the uh, creation of the shelf life business, which started around World War I in the late uh, 19-teens, okay? A way to put food on the shelf that would last months and months and months so the companies didn't lose profit. Okay, we just, we just destroyed our health, that's all. Um, so if there's no fiber in it, again, immediate sugar to the bloodstream. Okay, so that's the next step. You gotta eliminate the white stuff. So yes, it's fine to eat long grain brown rice and wild rice and beans and you know, whole foods, whole foods, whole foods, it's critical. Um, and then I just, I personally give a recommendation and I, I use the example of the gorilla at the zoo. Has anybody seen a gorilla at the zoo? By the way, he's a vegetarian. He could probably rip you in half. But um, <laughs> he, uh, he does not, um, he pretty much eats vegetables and they give him this little protein bar thing. I don't know what the protein source is, but um, I was there, uh, I went there for my birthday a couple weeks ago and uh, there wasn't a lot of other people around and he was just going alongside his wall there and picking these branches out of the ground, like these roots out of the ground, these long, I don't know what kind of plant it was. And he was stripping the bark off of them. It was just really cool to see like him eating foods in his natural environment. I mention this because when uh, they, they were feeding the gorillas fruit um, and the gorillas developed diabetes, just eating fruit. 
So they had to take the fruit away from the gorillas. Now they just eat vegetables and their little protein bar oh. and all the little plants that they feel like grabbing you know, that are around them. Um, so, so, the fiber, so the fiber didn't offset the sugar? Sure. Not, nope, nope, because it's not part of their natural diet. No. So, um, so <clears throat> somebody asked me this in the last class, so I, I think it's a good point, so I want to I um, uh, uh, kind of answer that question that you haven't heard yet. But um, oh, I just totally drew a blank on what, what I was going to say. Oh, well, I'll think of it later. So what you want to do is, um, for the first month, what I recommend doing is uh, at least avoiding the really, really high sugar fruits, okay? Dates, bananas, raisins, figs, uh, dried fruits, melons, those types of things, because they have such a high sugar content. Uh, I remember what it was. Somebody asked me last class, it's like, you know, if, if fruits and, and these things are dangerous for us, you know, what can we eat? Is it okay to eat fruit? Uh, my answer to that is, is a little bit tricky. Um, the first answer I'd like to give you is absolutely. I mean, fruits are amazing. They're very healthy foods. They should be eaten in moderation. Um, but it depends on the state of your health. That's the critical component. If you have an autoimmune condition, if you have cancer, if you have diabetes, if you have an infectious issue, you keep constantly getting sick over and over again, you get virus infections, bacterial infections, you get yeast infections, anything that's an infectious issue, no, you shouldn't be eating sugar. You shouldn't be eating fruit either. Okay, because it's going to feed that issue. But in a healthy body, absolutely. Let me, let me make that even more clear. A healthy, active body. Okay, because that sugar is not going to have a, a, a chance to damage your body. Okay, if you're active. Okay, that's another reason exercise is so important. Okay, so in a healthy, active body, yeah, you can eat all kinds of fruit and uh, honey and, you know, good foods like that. That's great. But in an unhealthy body, absolutely not. You need to take it out for a while. Um, I've dealt with this issue for a long time, and I'm a huge, huge fruit eater. Um, I hardly eat any fruit anymore. Um, it just doesn't work for me. Um, and I was addicted to it, man, because, you know, I was trying to um, transition off, so I'd throw dates and pineapples and everything sweet into my smoothie and drink it so it still tasted good to me, thinking I was being healthy. Didn't work. Doesn't work. Okay. So, step four, exercise. Okay, we've talked, kind of, kind of touched, touched on that a little bit. Step five is food combining rules. I didn't include that in here because it's another four pages and I just didn't want to make it too long. Um, I have, I've done classes on all this stuff, by the way. If you go to my website under Education Center and Healing Videos, I have 120 videos on there. Um, through YouTube and my YouTube channel, I've done classes on kidney health, on food combining, on, on a bazillion different things. So you can watch those. But um, basic food, and I'll just tell you what they are real quick because they're easy, so easy. Number one is eat fruit on an empty stomach. Okay? It won't sit in your, rot, uh, in your gut and rot and ferment um, when you eat it with proteins and starches and other foods. Um, your body will use it as fuel. So eat fruit in the morning, work out, boom. It's burned, you're not going to store it. Uh, it's going to give you energy, which you need. Um, it's going to work for you. Um, fruit in the morning, I'm a big fan of. Uh, so fruit on an empty stomach, that's number one. Number two, never combine proteins and starches. Hey, we live in Kansas City, man. Mm -hmm. Meat and potatoes country, right? Mm -hmm. So we eat meat and potatoes, we eat hamburgers on buns, we eat hot dogs on buns, we eat uh, chicken and mashed potatoes. I mean, it, it's the worst two foods you can possibly combine, proteins and starches. And I'll tell you why just real quick. Proteins, designed to be eaten by a carnivore, you know, that has sharp canine teeth, short intestinal tract, and a stomach that produces lots and lots of hydrochloric acid, which is the definition of a lion, not a human being, okay? They produce lots and lots of hydrochloric acid. So we, in turn, when we eat meat, we have to produce hydrochloric acid. Okay, when you eat starchy foods, if you eat bread or pasta or any of those kind of things, those need an alkaline environment to be broken down. Okay, that alkaline environment starts in the mouth. You can break down 90 plus percent of your carbohydrates by chewing and letting your saliva work. I have to remind myself to chew. You know, it's like, God, I get to chew. You know, we're so used to inhaling. Um, so, so when you eat those uh, carbohydrates, those starches, they actually pass the stomach, they go straight into the intestinal tract, and you start producing bile, an alkaline substance. So if, when you eat them together, you got alkaline bile, you got hydrochloric acid, just offsets each other. And then you need Tums and antacids, and you know, we wonder why antacids and laxatives are the number one selling um, over-the-counter drugs in, in America. Okay, this is why. Bad food combining. I had a gal, and when I did the food combining class, I had a gal in the back of the class, she raised her hand and said, I just want to let you know that you know, my husband's grown up eating meat and potatoes his whole life. And um, I make the meals, so um, I decided to, to change that. Um, she stopped combining proteins and starches. In two months, her husband lost 50 pounds. They didn't do anything else. They didn't change their foods even. 
They just combined them differently. He lost 50 pounds in two months. So you eat protein and leafy greens? So that's the third rule. Yeah. The third rule is that non-starchy vegetables combine with everything. Okay? I also give a list of 80-20 rules. So for example, 80% of every meal should be vegetables, 20% potatoes. 80% vegetables, 20% a piece of fish. 80% vegetables, 20% wild rice. 80% vegetables, 20% quinoa. 80% vegetables, 20% beans. Okay, so your vegetables with one other thing. Okay, not a bunch of other things. Okay, now if you're gonna go do it on Thanksgiving or whatever, you know, big deal. But, you know, on your daily life, you know, if you can make this one little change, it, it's monumental for people. They stop having digestive problems. They stop having acid reflux and heartburn. It's like the simplest thing in the world. So that's why I made that third rule, just to kind of drive the point home on what you can combine. Um, People are like, well, what can I eat? What do I eat for breakfast? I eat an omelet, okay? 20% your egg and put tons of vegetables in it. You know, broccoli and uh, peppers and onions and mm -hmm. all kinds of great things. Okay, make an omelet, mushrooms. So it's really not that hard to do. Um, you know, it's just, uh, for a lot of people, it's change and change isn't always easy, especially if you have a family. Mm -hmm. So, right. what's that? It's like this and this. Yep. Okay. Yep. Only a fool would close his hands like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, and the last step is just supplementing, supplementing intelligently. Um, I, I give people, I try to put in everybody's body the foundation for life. The water, you know, making sure they're getting off all the other beverages, the water, the minerals, the greens, green foods, okay? Um, that's where your calcium's at, that's where your nutrients are at, that's what all vegetarian animals on the planet eat that are healthy. Um, by the way, animals, if you've ever seen an animal in the wild, they don't really age. They live until they're supposed to live, and then they die, and they look pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. My dog looks very much the same. <laughs> See? There you go. Perfect She's example. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So animals don't we age like we do up. because they eat what's in their natural environment. Okay, we've yeah, turned away from what's in our natural environment, therefore we are aging faster. It's as simple as that. Okay, so we got to turn back to that. Um, so water, minerals, greens, fiber. Um, you know, those are just some critical, critical things. Um, that everybody needs to do. Uh, I think that is it. I don't know what time I'm at, but um, usually people have questions, so I'm happy to answer any questions. It doesn't have to be related to the topic. It can be. Um, just, uh, you know what? Um, let, let, me, let me give you a couple of, how much time? What, where am I at on time? It's 7.30. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me just give you a couple of these real quick. Um, there's a the third page. I call it um, sugar, legalized drug. It's like the legalized drug, drug trade, sugar. <laughs> So um, these are how to, just some tips to overcome sugar addiction. Um, because the addiction, because by definition, an addiction is something that psychologically and physically is very hard to change. Yes, and you said it absolutely right, psychologically and physically. Mm -hmm. It's not just one or the other. It's not just mind over matter. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's both. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you treat it that serious, mm -hmm. like, you know, just uh, treat it like, you're an alcoholic. I mean, seriously, treat it like you're an alcoholic and cut it out of your life, even if it's for a month, and tell me it doesn't change your life. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have to be that serious about it because it's such an addictive substance. And you literally have to, just like with alcoholics um, or heroin or anything like anything really addictive, it literally changed the cells of the body. So it takes time to change those cells back. Okay? So here's some of the tips you can do. Um, and I'll tell you the ones that work specifically for me the best. Um, uh, drink water, critically important. Like I said, hydrate yourself first thing in the morning. Uh, make sure you're hydrated throughout the day. Um, that will cut down your cravings. Uh, build in the adrenal glands. That was one of the keys for me. Okay, adrenal wipeout. That's America. Stress, anxiety, caffeine, sugar. Okay, the American lifestyle wipes out the adrenals. When your adrenals aren't functioning and you're wiped out, that's hormones. Okay, hormones is what keeps you going. When you need to lift a car off of someone because they're trapped, you don't need a Snickers bar, okay? <laughs> you need your adrenaline, okay? That comes from the adrenal glands, okay? So when the adrenal glands aren't functioning well, as you get into the late afternoon, because your body replenishes at night when you're sleeping, assuming you're sleeping well, that's why sleep's so incredible. But when you get towards the evening, you're like, your, your, your adrenals aren't working, those hormones aren't being produced, you need fuel, you need fuel. So you crave sugar and sweets. I can't tell you how many people, one of the first questions I ask people, so you start to crave sugar or bread or alcohol around four or five o'clock. 
All the time, yeah. man. All the time. Okay. So the adrenal glands, uh, building the adrenals will help with that. I've um, done whole classes on adrenal glands. You can watch that online. Uh, the herbs that work for me were holy basil, one of my favorite herbs on the planet, licorice root, and deer antler. Those are the main things I did to rebuild my adrenals. Um, I'm obviously very thin, so I do lots of salt. I do lots of good fats, which are also critical for the adrenals and the hormonal system. Okay, that's what works for me. Um, get your minerals. What's that? Say deer? Deer antler. Yeah, I know that sounds weird. I can explain it another time. Um, uh, quit in cold turkey. Like you said, treat it like a drug. Okay, quit in cold turkey. Just do it. Um, not saying you're going to be perfect. Not saying you're not going to go back to it. Um, it was a journey for me, and, and it's a difficult one. So, um, again, first step is the consciousness of it, the awareness of it, um, and then just start trying to do it. Um, have people help you. Have have people hold you accountable, uh, have your family all do it together. I mean, you know, make it fun. Um, <laughs> fat to the rescue. What are you looking okay? at? Okay, increase your good <laughs> fats. Yeah. Increase your good fats, increase your good fats, increase your good fats. Okay, Jay's noticed huge benefits from olive oil. Okay, by increasing that. Coconut um, oil. That get, what's that? Coconut oil. Coconut oil, amazing, amazing food for the thyroid and the glandular system and give you fuel and energy. Um, it's not dangerous in any way, shape, or form. Oh, that's a total myth. Uh, saturated fat. Oh my gosh, I'm scared of saturated fat. That is stupid. Um, breast milk is made of saturated fat. Um, all your hormones are produced from saturated fat. Your veins and arteries are protected by saturated fat. Okay, it's again, did God make it or did humans make it? Okay, if it's humans made it, it's poison. That's, what, that's where the dangerous saturated fat comes from. It's processed foods, it's deep fat, fried fatty foods. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. A couple of you had a concerned look on your face, so I wanted to make that point. Okay, so increase your good fat intake, increases your metabolism, gives you sustainable fuel throughout the day, decreases your cravings, help you produce hormones properly. I mean, there's a bazillion reasons why you need to increase your good fats. Okay, um, exercise, uh, eat fermented foods. This is another huge one for me. Um, kefir, um, fermented vegetables, raw sauerkraut, things like that. One of the keys to uh, cultures around the world that live happy and healthy into a hundred. Um, is fermented foods. They all eat some kind of fermented foods. And it's funny, I have friends from other countries. I have a friend from Guatemala, I have a friend from Egypt, and they mentioned how they remember their mom or their grandma always making fermented foods in the house. Okay, we don't eat fermented foods. But if you eat fermented foods, that's good, healthy gut, intestinal bacteria, you won't have cravings. And this one has worked for me huge. I have a little craving. I make up a huge batch of fermented vegetables, and I have it in a big gallon jar. And I have a craving, and I just eat it. three, four big tablespoons of those, and it's gone. It is gone. Um, so that is an amazing trick. Um, and then I put eggs over bagels. You know. So yogurt, a yogurt, a natural yogurt that isn't filled with fruit sugar. I, I don't count sugar. yogurt. You I don't, don't count yogurt. I don't count yogurt. Because it's, if you buy it at the grocery store, it's pasteurized. No, no. Um, if you get raw yogurt from a friend, or you make it yourself, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, there's just things that are a lot more powerful. Okay. Um, you eat a container of yogurt from the grocery store mm -hmm. versus a capsule of a probiotic supplement at a health food store. Mm -hmm. One capsule from a health food store probiotic is like eating 100 containers of yogurt. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, Activa's like, oh, yeah. they're all on the bandwagon, you know, yeah. to sell their yogurt. But you're not getting that much benefit, trust me. Uh, so proteins, uh, again, more sustainable the source of fuel for the body. The proteins actually go to the livers and they're con converted into sugar that the body can utilize. Okay, so that's another trick. And then, then the herbs. So all kinds of great herbs uh, that, to help with sugar issues. Uh, so I'll end it there. And uh, What were you saying? The basil, the deer antler? What was holy it? basil, licorice root. Yeah, I mean, I could give you like 10 more, but th those are the ones I like and that I commonly give to people. Um, that seem to, I get really good results from. And it's a cumulative effect, it might take a, a month or two. Um, but you'll notice a difference. Uh, all of America can benefit from holy basil. Does anybody H O L Y? H O L Y. H O L Y. H O L Y. Holy basil. Is it yeah. a, a really a true basil? It's I mean, well, it's in the basil family. Yeah. It's in the basil family, but it's a totally different plant. It's actually the plant that surrounds and protects the Taj Mahal in India. Um, uh, it is anti-inflammatory. It's protective of the body. It reduces stress and anxiety. It uplifts the mood and spirit. It stops the excess production of cortisol levels from the adrenals when we're stressed out. I mean, this plant is. Awesome, awesome, And you can stuff. buy this. I have a like, family tree. I've seen well, it. Well, yeah, and I have it in my store. I mean, yeah. I have a little store, and I have the holy basil powder, and I have it in the capsules, and uh, I sell a ton of it. Um, I try to get people on it because everybody in America can benefit from it because we're all stressed out by something, you know, and people get on it and they just feel good. 
So, so these are supplements. That yeah, those are supplements. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying like run around in the forest and try to find a deer and yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably you not going to happen. The next one you hit. Well, you know, they need to pull the deer out at Shawnee Mission Park all the time, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, so, so these are supplements. Like I said, I, you know, I'm a naturopath, so I work with homeopathics and herbs and things like that to re reestablish uh, balance with people. Uh, but you can look all, all that up on the website too. You mentioned calcium. Mm -hmm. I read that vitamin K2 mm -hmm. uh, takes calcium out of your blood vessels and moves it into your bones. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? True story. Yeah, so it's not that we're calcium deficient, it's mostly that we're eating too much acidic foods and we're not getting enough of the other minerals we need to properly absorb calcium. So mm -hmm. vitamin K would be an example, vitamin D would be an example, magnesium would probably be the biggest example. Um, so uh, strontium, I mean on and on and on. But there's a lot of nutrients we need to properly um, get bone, uh, get minerals into the bones. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. well, I know you guys. No, no.